I decided to go into farming because I liked working with my father. I like bossing him around. <laughs> <laughs> and I truly love working outside, working on machinery, and just coming home to a father and a mom. <laughs> And I should be a mother if you thought. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, I don't know, I just kind of fell in love with it since I started working on it at 16. And now I go to college for agronomy to come back, do a partnership. Michael came here in 1855. And then he, he farmed till the late 1800s. And then his son, John, took it over. And then John farmed farmed it up to around 1931. And then his son Herman, which would be my grandpa, took it over. And then Herman farmed it, farmed the ground up to then to 1973. And then my dad took it over in 73, John. And then Melissa and I took it, bought it out from my dad's estate in 2003. And then Melissa and I have been running it ever since. And then Bella here will be the sixth generation coming home. So throughout those years, you know, we started out with 40 or 80 acres, I think it was in the 1800s, and now we got it built up to the, the 700 that we own, and we farm approximately 2,000 acres total altogether. Seen with my parents, and then I went to college, came back, and then before I was, was allowed to go back to the farm, my parents wanted me to work off the farm. So then, God, I don't know how long, so probably, what, so 89, 90 to 2000. In six, 2006, 2007. Yeah, I worked um, for Didion and United Co-op as a grain buyer and elevator manager all those years, and that's how I met Melissa. Yeah. So, and then in 2006, we decided that I, that I had enough of the that stuff, and I wanted to farm full time because with the kids and it was getting to be a lot working full-time and then farming at that time we probably were around about a thousand acres I don't see that so then we decided that i made the move and we sold a little pioneer seed for a little bit and now we sell a little bit of channel but our main focus is the farming operation so but yeah i've always wanted to do it i mean so what the what's the population of farmers probably less than two percent in the whole united states and then yeah. for a young yeah. female or any a woman or even a minority that come into the business is that percentage is way lower you know so um yeah so yeah i mean it's typically in the past in my opinion not to sound sexist a man's occupation but there's a lot of women in agriculture not alone production but in ag business and uh i know sometimes i just don't think they get to know right the, the recognition that they should for entering in this line of work it's probably like any business, you know, it, it changes. And I think one of the reasons John's been successful and ha his family itself has kept this farm for so long is like he said, he went to school, she's going to go to school and where it'll stay in the family, it's a business. So you've got to move forward. You've got to um, adapt to new um, customer demands and um, what, what do they want to see you do? So we do conservation practices. We look for other green practices to incorporate. Um, I guess we have two girls. It was just natural that probably one of ours would come back. Um, farming's hard to enter unless you are in a family. Yeah. So that's another thing that's always going to limit the diversity yeah. in farming that's unfortunate. Yeah. It, a young adult today, whether male or female, in my opinion, wanting to get going, it's, it's hard without having someone behind you either supporting you or having you set up down the road, which I was fortunate that I had that. My parents, my dad had that. His dad had, you know, down the line that there's that line of succession that helps to make the farm more viable, and uh, so hopefully we keep it going for another six years yet, <laughs> or six uh, six generations, I should say. <laughs>